So inside After Effects with a composition open consisting of several 3D vector layers, first let us go ahead and create a camera and talk about the different lens presets that we can use. So for that, I will go up to the layer menu, new camera, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. Great. Now, the default camera type is set to two node, but we can also use the one node camera, which is a camera that orients around itself. In this case, we're going to be working inside the two node camera, which fixates on a single point of interest that we can point it in different layers and orbit around those layers. Another thing is that After Effects provides us with presets to match up the camera with real world camera lenses, as you can see inside the preset drop down menu from the telephoto to a wide angle lens. Now, the camera, the default camera in After Effects, is using the 50 millimeter preset, and this camera setting does not change the appearance of our scene. It makes things look basically the way our eyes see them in terms of the zoom factor. I may go ahead and switch to another view here. So I will switch to one of these orthographic views. In this case, I will use the top orthographic view. I will double click inside camera one to bring up the camera settings. And I will use the wide angle lens, the 50 millimeter wide angle lens, and then click OK. As you can see here, what we need to do is we need to move the camera forward since the camera has a very wide angle of view and smaller zoom. And I will do this on the Z axis like so. All right, let me go ahead and undo this. Double click again to bring up the camera settings. And as of a preset, I'm going to use the telephoto 200 millimeter lens and then click OK. In this case, what we need to do is we need to actually move the camera backwards since the camera has a very narrow angle of view, but a very lengthy zoom to match. And I'm going to do this again on the Z axis like so. All right. Let me undo this again. Go ahead and show you something else here. Now I'm going to open up the camera options, double click on camera one to bring the camera settings. And this time around, I will set the presets back to 15 millimeter. Now, before I click OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle through those presets. And as I do, pay attention to the zoom values here. These zoom values will change as I cycle through. So I'm going to use the done arrow key on my keyboard. As you can see now, these values are changing, which means we don't have to use what After Effects provides for us, these presets. Let me go ahead and click OK. What I can do, for example, is I can scrub this and create a wider angle lens. We can create my own. So we're not we don't have to use what After Effects provides for us. It's a good beginning, but it's all up to you what you want to use. In this case, since I'm very far away from the objects here, on the Z-axis, I'm going to move the camera quite close, right? And as you can see here, this gives us a look at see here on the sides. It gives us a more lens distortion. So it all comes down what you're after and how do you want your 3D objects to appear through your lenses? So as we talked about earlier, a two-node camera comes with a point of interest. So inside the top orthographic view, here's the camera, and here is the point of interest. So in this case, I'm going to press the letter P on the keyboard, and I will move the camera on the X axis. So I'm going to scrub this, and as I do, the camera moves to the left, but also notice that the camera continues to point towards the center of the scene. And that is because the point of interest is not moving and that can cause some issues. So I'll go ahead and undo that. Let me show you something else. I will create a couple of keyframes. I will click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. 
I will scrub the current time indicator to perhaps around here and then create another keyframe. Then I will use one of these camera control tools here. In this case, I will use the orbit around camera point of interest. And inside the active camera, I will go ahead and create a camera movement. And as I do, I'm holding down the shift key. All right. Now look what happens inside the top orthography view. The camera interpolates straight between points, creating a path and gives the illusion of creating a perfect arc, which is not the case. Of course, we can go ahead and edit the paths, Bezier handles, but also it can be very tricky. Instead, let's go ahead and first of all, reset everything here. All right. Since both of these approaches can give us a lot of issues trying to animate a camera through 3D space, a way around this is to attach an all object to the camera. So in this case, I'm just going to right click here and create a new null object. Great. Now, what is a null object? Well, a null object is nothing. It's just a red box with an anchor point in the upper left corner. What it does have, it has all the same transform properties that a regular layer has both on 2D and 3D. You see, we must turn this into a 3D layer if we want to continue navigating through 3D space. So what we're going to do is we're going to parent the camera one to the null one, which means the null one will control camera one. And we're going to do this by using the parent pick whip. Now we need to do this inside the parent and link column. In the event that you don't have that, you just, just uh, right click on this empty space to get to the parent and link column. Since mine is visible, I will go ahead and use the parent pick whip to parent the camera one to the null one. All right. So let's go ahead and press the letter P on the keyboard. Again, I'm going to do the same. I will change the position of the camera on the X axis. And as I do that, as I drag the X value to the left, it is moving the entire camera to the left. But actually, this is exactly the same behavior as if we had a one node camera. So let me go ahead and remove that and toggle off the visibility of the camera one, which is a two node camera. All right, click and create another camera. This time around, the type is one node camera. Click OK, press the letter P, and I'm going to scrub the X value. And here is the exact same motion. So in this case, I will remove this. I just wanted to show you. So another approach. So the, the question basically is, what would we use a two node camera? First of all, let me go ahead and reset everything here. And another approach to using a null object as we used earlier is the orbit null. And the reason for that is to rotate, move around the scene and create a circular motion. It is quite challenging to create a circular motion using a camera's position keyframes. So instead, we can use an orbit null. And the way we're going to do this, right click, camera, create orbit null. This creates a 3D null. Here is the 3D null that automatically parents the camera to that null object and puts the null at the point of interest of the camera. Now we have the null object that we can use as a controller. So we have the camera one that has been parented to the orbit null, which is great. Now it's time for us to go ahead and create a circular motion animation. Before I do anything, I will double click inside camera one to go inside the camera settings. And I will change the preset instead of a 50 millimeter preset. I will go ahead and use a wide angle lens preset. In this case, the 24 millimeter preset, and then click OK. You see, I would like to have 
a different zoom factor because all of these layers are actually a little bit close in relationship to each other. So a wide angle lens will help me so see those a little bit better. This is one thing. Another thing still on the camera one, just going to bring this in on the Z axis before I start animating, I should say around here. All right. Great. So on this camera one, I will press the letter P for the position. I will click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. I will scrub the current time indicator to perhaps one second and then bring the camera on the Z axis very close to these three layers here. And then for the round preview, let's go ahead and drop this resolution to half. So we do it a little bit faster. So we'll press the space bar for the keyboard. Here it is. And that's the first animation. So we're around here. I'm just going to target now the orbit null. I will press the letter R on the keyboard for the rotation properties. And I will animate the orbit null on the Y axis. In this case, I will click on the stopwatch on the Y rotation to create the first keyframe. I will move the current time indicator to perhaps here and then change the degrees from zero to 90 degrees like so. Great. Now for the next motion here, I would actually would like to have a hold before I get to the next motion. So in other words, After Effects will come here, will stay a little bit, then it will just move and do something else. So let me show you how we're going to do this. So I will target again the camera one, create a keyframe, move the current time indicator perhaps here, create another keyframe, move this again, and then just on the Z axis, bring the camera quite close to these two layers, like so. Great. As for this one, we're going to change the interpolation from linear, I'm right clicking here, to toggle hold keyframe, which means After Effects, when it comes here, it will wait all this long and then it will move. So let's do a RAM preview, press the space bar. It waits, then it moves in. Great. Okay. So let's do around here. Let's create another keyframe. I will move the current time indicator, create another keyframe and another one. And this time I will back this off, say around here. And again, we're going to select this keyframe, we're going to right click and we're going to toggle hold keyframe as well. So it holds here, but then it holds here again. So let's see how that works. It holds a little bit, it backs off, and then, well, we're going to see what we're going to do next, which is back on the orbit null, I will create another keyframe on the Y rotation. And then I will scrub the current time indicator, perhaps here, and then just change the degrees to minus 90 degrees. There we go. So let's press the home key to go to the very beginning, press the space bar to do the RAM preview, backs off, and rotate. Perfect. Great. So this is one thing. Now let's fix the animation here because most of these keyframes, except this one and this one, the rest are linear interpolation. So I will shift select this one and this one too. I will go inside the graph editor. And by the way, as a graph type, I'm using the speed graph. So from linear interpolation, I will change those to easy is. And since both of them are being selected, I'm just going to move the influence handle to perhaps 100 or 90%. It doesn't really matter, just so you can play with these settings around on your end. So this is one thing. Let's do the same for the camera one. I believe it's this one, this one, and this one. So shift select all of these, go inside the graph editor, Use easy is and bring the influence handle. And by the way, I'm holding the shift key as I do. Great. Let's do another RAM preview. Press the space bar, it comes in, nice animation. It waits, it zooms here, 
backs off and rotates. Perfect. This is exactly what I was going for. And if you actually look inside the custom view one, this works very organically. You see, no arcs, nothing like that. It just works the way it's supposed to work. And we can see this from the active camera. You see that? You can see all these motion paths from here. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot you can do, but this is just a great example of how to use circular motions with using orbitals. So how about using multiple nodes to create a whole different animation? So inside the multiple nodes composition, basically what I have is those two 3D layers. As for this text layer, I will press the letter U twice to show the modified properties. All the thing I added is just a drop shot with a distance of 10 and size of 20. And I did this as a visual effect. As inside the custom view one, as you can see here, those two 3D layers have been separated a bit, so they're not glued to each other. And all the thing I did is just move this on the Z axis. All right. I will go back to the view menu and reset this 3D view. Now let's go ahead and create animation. So I will right click to create a camera. Again, this is going to be a two node camera. And as of a preset, I'm going to stick again with the same preset, the 24 millimeter preset as a wide angle lens. But of course, feel free to use your own preset here. Now this will help me with my animation here. And that's why I'm using that preset. Then I will right click to create a null object. This null two is a 2D layer. So I will convert this to a 3D layer and I will parent camera one to null two. And again, for that, I'm going to use the parent pick whip to do so. Great. So let's go ahead and animate first the null two. So for that, I will press the letter R on the keyboard and I will actually do that on the Y axis, which means the Y rotation. So I will set the Y rotation to, let's see, 45 degrees. I will move the current time indicator around here and then set the degrees to minus 45. Let's go ahead and do a run preview. This is all thing we get. Okay. All right. Now I will concentrate here on the camera one. For that, I will press the letter P for the position property. So I will click on the stopwatch to create the first keyframe. And now I'm holding the Alt key or the Option key just to move around on the custom view one. On the Z axis, I'm going to pull back the camera quite a bit. I will press the letter K to go to the next visible keyframe. And on the Z axis, I'm going to bring this closer to those 3D layers, like so. All right, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this animation. Nice, okay. What else can I do? Well, I can actually create another null object. Let me bring this on the top of the layer stack. I will parent this time the null two to the null three, but first I will turn this into a 3D layer. Use the parent pick whip to parent null two to the null three. And this time around, I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. And on the null three, I will press the letter P on the keyboard for the position, set the first keyframe, and on the Y axis, I'm going to bring this up here. All right. Press the letter K on the keyboard to go to the next visible keyframe. And then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring this back around here. So this is what we got. All right. Now, the reason that I use this is also to create another variation on the rotation. Okay, so I will press the letter R on the keyboard. And this time around, I will rotate it on the X axis, which is the X rotation. I'm not going to set any keyframes yet. First, I will test that out. I'm going to go for 25 degrees. Not bad. All right, so this is what we have. A nice angle here. 
Perfect. So I will bring the current time indicator right here. And on the null tool, I will create a keyframe. Then I will scrub this a bit in time, create another keyframe, and then around here, create another keyframe. So for this keyframe, I'm going to set this keyframe from a linear interpolation to a hold keyframe. And the reason I'm going to do this is because when, when the animation hits this keyframe right here, it's going to pause. It's going to hold because I want to have a bit of a pause here. So I will right click, select that, right click and use toggle hold keyframe. Let's play that. It holds. And then, well, we need to do something. We're going to select this one. And let's see, I'm going to press the letter J on the keyboard to make sure that I'm right on top of this keyframe. And I'm going to set this back to zero. Okay, so now the RAM preview, it holds, then rotates. Now I want to have a bit of a more of a distance between the hold and the next keyframe. So I'm going to distance those a bit. All right, great. So. This is one thing. Another thing is I will press the letter J on the keyboard to make sure that I am on this keyframe. And now on the X rotation, I will set the first keyframe, press the letter K to go to the next visible keyframe, set another keyframe, press the letter K to go to the next visible keyframe and set this back to zero. There we go. As for this keyframe, I will right click and use the toggle hold keyframe to make sure that both of these keyframes are hold keyframes. It will stop and then rotate. Great. So I will select this keyframe and inside the graph editor, and by the way, still I'm using the speed graph. I will turn this into an easy is. Double click on this keyframe and inside the incoming velocity, I will set the influence to let's say 90%. And I will do the same on this keyframe inside the graph editor. Easy is, double click on this keyframe, set the influence to 90%. Okay, so let's play that. There we go. Maybe it's a little fast here. I will shift select those two, just distance them just a bit. Perfect. See, this is what I was going for. So basically combining nulls with camera is an extremely powerful tool inside After Effects. I would suggest you kind of plan this ahead and think about the motion that you would like to have. Then use similar techniques that they will bring you smooth and organic animations for any of your own projects. I would like to thank each one of you for visiting my channel, watching the inspiring lectures and project tutorials. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.